Today we're going to talk about indefinites, indefinite adjectives and pronouns, gli indefiniti. So let's first explain what they are. They are adjectives or pronouns that describe a non-specific quantity of something. Let's see some examples. If I say, for example, ho due libri di linguistica sullo scaffale, I am giving a precise specific quantity of books. How many? Two. However, if I say ho qualche libro di linguistica, o molti libri di linguistica. This is non-specific. This quantity is indefinite. I have a few books or I have many books, but I really don't know how many. Quanti libri di linguistica hai? Pochi. A few. Notice here that I am using in the second and the third sentence an adjective, which precedes a noun, whereas in the last sentence I'm using an, a pronoun. Pochi stands for pochi libri di linguistica. Replaces the libri, and so it's a pronoun. This illustration here um, indicates each or every of something, and that's an adjective. I'm going to use it with a noun. I'm going to use ogni with a noun in singular after it. For example, ogni studente ha uno zaino. Every student or each student. In ogni aula ci sono molti studenti. Now you already know these examples. We've, we've used them before. Just remember that after ogni, the noun that follows has to be in singular. So that's each or every. The next group would be, as the illustration indicates, all of the group, the entire, the whole. And so that is going to be tutto, in different forms, depending on the noun that follows. For example, tutto l'esame era difficile, all of the exam, the entire exam was difficult, so not just some parts of it, the entire exam. Mi piace tutta la città. I like all of the city, the entire city. Non conosco tutti i tuoi amici. I don't know all of your friends. Loro escono tutte le sere. Now, you already know these examples. Just notice that tutto, in this case, when it's an adjective, is always followed by a definite article and then a noun. And so the form of tutto has to reflect that noun in number and gender. Tutto, all of, entire. The next group indicates, as the picture shows, some part not the entire group, some part, so some or a few. For that I have two options. I can use qualche with the noun in singular. For example, c'è sempre qualche studente in biblioteca. There are always a few students in biblioteca, in the library. Porta qualche libro interessante. Bring a few interesting books or some interesting books. Notice that in English I'm translating this with plural. A few students, a few books, or some students, some books. In Italian, however, qualche is singular and must be accompanied by a noun in singular. My other option is to say alcuni or alcune, and that is plural. So I'll say, ci sono sempre alcuni studenti in fila, or alcune aule sono molto vecchie. Alcuni studenti, some students, a few students, alcune aule, some classrooms, in English, there is absolutely no difference in the meaning between qualche studente and alcuni studenti. It means exactly the same thing. However, in Italian, grammatically, I do have to distinguish. So, if I'm using qualche, I'll use singular. If I'm using alcuni or alcune, I'll use plural. Another group of indefinite adjectives indicate a large or a small quantity of something. And you know all of these. Molto, tanto, troppo, poco. Uh, they all vary in their endings according to the noun that they describe. For example, ci sono molte persone in questa banca. Persone, remember, persona is feminine in Italian. There's no personi. There's no such thing. Persona is always feminine, whether it describes men or women. Doesn't matter. Ci sono molte persone in questa banca. Ho molta fame. Oggi fame is feminine, so I'm going to use molta. Ho prelevato pochi soldi ieri. Bevo poco vino. Remember with poco that in plural you have to spell it with an H to keep the correct pronunciation. Now let's talk about the pronouns. The pronouns replace the noun as well, and so they're not going to be followed by a noun. Here we have a picture that indicates each or every, but in this case it means each one or every one, and that is ognuno. Ognuna if it refers to feminine. For example, ognuno ha portato i bagagli. Everyone brought their luggage. Everyone. Le professoresse sono tutte brave. Ognuna ha molti studenti. In the first case, I use the general masculine gender, which in Italian uh, describes unspecified um, group. If I don't know the breakdown, I'm always going to use the masculine gender. So, ognuno means everyone, assuming that it's mixed 
uh, men and women. Le professoresse sono tutte brave. Now, clearly here I'm talking about female professors, and so when I refer to them, I'm going to use ognuna, each one of them, meaning le professoresse. So that is each or everyone. This indicates the entire group, all of it, everything, or everyone, and for that I'm going to use tutto in different forms depending on what it, it refers to. For example, tutti sono venuti alla mia festa, tutti. Here, again, I'm assuming that this tutti group is made up of men and women, and that's why I'm using the general masculine ge uh, plural. Um, so, tutti, everyone. Conosco tutti in questa foto. Again, in this uh, picture, I'm assuming that I'm seeing men and women, and so that's why I'm going to use the general uh, plural, which is masculine. Tutti in questa foto. Non so quali scarpe comprare. Mi piacciono tutte. Now, here I'm specifically talking about something in feminine gender. Le scarpe are feminine, and so when I say mi piacciono tutte, I'm using feminine because it refers back to scarpe. Ho molta fame oggi. Mangio tutto. I will eat everything. Be very cautious here not to use tutti, because tutti is people. Mangio tutto. This indicates some part of a group, so someone or some of them. <clears throat> qualcuno with singular. Ho visto qualcuno nel tuo appartamento. I saw someone in your apartment. Or, ci sono tante ragazze in classe, ne conosci qualcuna? Here I'm using the feminine gender, qualcuna, because I'm referring back to these girls. Many girls in the class, do you know some of them? Ne conosci qualcuna? Or, I can use alcuni, alcune, with plural. I miei amici sono pigrissimi. Alcuni si alzano a mezzogiorno. Imagine these friends getting up at noon. Some of them get up at noon. Le mie amiche, here I'm talking about my female friends, and I'm going to use alcune. Praticano persino gli sport estremi. So alcune is feminine because it refers to amiche. Alcuni is masculine. It refers to amici. No difference in meaning between this, these two options, qualcuno o alcuni, but remember that one is singular and one is plural, and so they have to be accompanied by singular or plural verbs. Lastly, something. We all know this one. Qualcosa. However, depending on the context, there is a small little difference here. If qualcosa is followed by a verb, it's going to be accompanied by the preposition da. Voglio qualcosa da mangiare. Something to eat. However, if it's followed by an adjective in the sentence, I want something nice, it's going to be followed by di. Voglio qualcosa di bello. If you have any follow-up questions after this presentation, please email me or come to my office hours. Ciao, ciao.